Hello everybody, this is Nia Boaz Feiler and I'm here with a weekly astrological message for the week between the 30, well truly the 31st already, and the 6th of June 2020. Time flies. We are heading into a full moon lunar eclipse on the 5th. An energetic peak of this month, very transformative time again transits that astrologers have been talking about for years um, that talk about great transformation for humanity that indeed did arrive in our skies between January and March the time of coronavirus in the world are coming back again you know in the sky for a second round one of second round of three total this year and as we draw towards July, this conjunction between Jupiter and Pluto is going to intensify in the sky. So another great wave of transformation follows. And we can see how in the world right now we are dealing with the price that we pay for our mistakes. We can see the rage, we can see the sense of loss, we can see the feeling of general vulnerability, we can see how governments and regimes all over the world are trying to tighten their grip on civil societies with a fist of fear. We're seeing how people everywhere are going out to the streets fighting for what is right. We can see clearer the things that need to change. We can discredit much clearly the ones who follow these outdated laws and regulations. And this is a time to lovingly change the world. Not by spreading more hate and violence and fear and hurting others or hurting property or hurting other people. You know, like some of what I see around the world is very violent. What I try to remind myself as a mantra is that when the world misbehaves towards me doesn't give me the right to misbehave towards myself or the world in return the fact that someone's standards weren't high enough towards me doesn't mean i need to lower mine towards myself or others because someone hurt me i can't hurt myself or others I'm not allowed to. I'm just perpetuating that same signature. And this is some of what I'm seeing with the protests. And I call my brothers and sisters and anything in between brothers and sisters to lovingly change this world, to peacefully change this world, to non-violently change this world. More violence would only cause more casualties and give the fear mongers reasons to tighten their fists around civil society even more. I want to say that lives matter. I want to say that black lives matter. I want to say that trans lives matter. I want to say that animal lives matter. I want to say that all life matters. I want to say that we are at a metamorphic change that understands that some of old traditions, patriarchal traditions, need to be rooted out. They need to be rooted out maternally, lovingly, gently, firmly. Zero tolerance. But 
politely and with a smile on. This situation can't go on. And people understand everywhere that draconic laws are trying to be passed in stealth. That uh, leaders try to gain more power by spreading fear. So we need to fight for what is right. Fight for what is right and do it in a non-violent, high manner. Firm, but high manner. Better than what we're getting from the other side. Or we're no different. Um, in the sky, we're going to have a lunar eclipse that's um, not a full lunar eclipse, so the moon isn't going to turn blood red. It's just going to darken a little. And as I learned from Stephen Forrest, the moon turns blood red because only the sunset's light can bounce off the atmosphere of Earth and reach the moon. So uh, if you take a chair and sit on the moon with a cold beer or a drink, you would have the most beautiful sight. You would see the sun setting behind the earth and you would see all the sunsets of earth at once. That's why the whole moon turns red. So that would be a beautiful sight and I hope NASA could take a picture of it one day or why give it to the Americans? Somebody can take a picture of it someday. Um, I guess I'm in NASA soccer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, definitely a very transformative time on an emotional psychic level again the mutable signs are heightened in the sky so everything we're seeing is global everything we're seeing has both a personal and a public dimension we're all going through this transformative time together and yes we're reaching another peak by the end of June and the beginning of July. And then again November, December. Also the state of Israel where I'm in is going to um, go through, through what historically is a time of defensive and combative operations again in the sky. So hopefully things are going to be quiet here. Um, This lunar eclipse in the 15th degree of Sagittarius is going to happen at a time in which Mercury sextile Uranus needing us to heighten the pace of renewing and updating our navigation through life on the one hand, of a square between Mercury and Chiron, understanding the loss and the pain between us right now, between civil society, with different parts, um, touching the pain, touching the wounds and trying to heal them, fighting against that poisonous infection that we can see that is still so widespread within all of us. The old ways, the neglecting of the honor, of the sacredness of all life on this planet. And this lunar eclipse is going to square Mars and Neptune in Pisces. And that brings along with it a sense of a, m being a martyr or a victim. The pain involved with the loss. The fear and the impotence confronting something that is greater, vaster, and incomprehensible, uh, and the need to act collectively for a higher cause. And it can cause us to try and burst out with, through anger, and through creativity and spirituality, 
in art and bring our ideas and actions into a public global level and it can also bring times that we want to recoil and just forget about all of this nightmarish reality that we've created in front of us and just encapsulate ourselves within our own dream world whether it's through locking behind uh, you know uh, locking us behind the uh, closed doors and seeing a good film or um, reading a book or whether it's through uh, drinking something or using some drugs or sleeping or you know whatever it is we have many ways to disconnect both things can occur we can want to come together and we can be, feel over um, swamped with feeling, you know, and need to recoil. So, basically, if there's something you want to add up about the days, you have to remember that we're leading up to that energetic peak on Friday, and Sunday the. 31st, Monday the 1st, are both not so easy days when it comes to communication and navigation and our whole emotional digestive system is a turbulent time. We can feel it like we have a little bit of an indigestion emotionally. So really, you know, drink a lot of chamomile. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Enhance your calm. Try and keep it at a low intensity, the emotions and the drama. Wednesday, however, is much better, much more energetic. We have a, a Venus conjunct the Sun. It's a new Venus cycle. But at this time, Venus squares Mars and Neptune. And uh, again, we can feel that sense that I was talking about of either loss impotence and, and, and uh, surrendering to something that is greater than me or working collectively to change something that we believe is greater than ourselves. Um, it's a great time for some visualizing and it's a great time to transmute our emotions. I, I can say that this time is a pregnancy, an emotional pregnancy for all of us. It is an emotional pregnancy for us as a civil society and it's uh, an emotional pregnancy for us as individuals. There's a grand water trine on the third, on that day, in the sky between Mercury and Mars and the moon. And we cannot hasten this process. We need to let it go through. Thursday the fourth, however, is, is beautiful in the sky. And I'd really wish that you spend it with people you love, eating things you love, drinking things you love, enjoying your life because the sky supports it. A lot of sex styles in the sky. And then Friday the 5th, that's the peak, that's the lunar eclipse and 15 Sagittarius. So um, mutable signs are affected more from this eclipse or by this eclipse. And this eclipse again is happening squaring Neptune and Mars that are conjunct in uh, Pisces. And while Mercury is sextiling Uranus and squaring Chiron. And we've explained all of that before. Uh, the moon is also opposing Venus, that is conjunct the sun. Venus in retrograde in Gemini. Again, talking about um, learning new ways and processing the old regarding our relationship with the material plane, Venus. Um, and because, of course, there, every time there is a full moon, the sun is opposing the moon, then we know that the sun is also squaring Mars. That's happening on the 6th, on Saturday. And that's the time that we better enhance our calm, be calmer and nicer, because our all, all of our male side, hello, Georgia, all of our male side is heightened. 
all of our aggressive emotions are heightened and if we're not careful we could lead to separations or, or fights or arguments that are not necessary at this time but I'm afraid you know that or I don't know if fear is the right word for it but I, I feel like you know that w what we need to understand right now is that unity and bridging the differences between us and doing things out of love and compassion firmly but more motherly than paternally you know you know, helping the person rise up to the level that we, or, and helping ourselves rise up. You know, we can't do it harshly and violently. Because if we do, we'll be more involved in fighting between ourselves than fighting what we need to fight together in order to change this world for ourselves and for our children and theirs. So, the worst that can happen is that we're fragmented and we are fighting each other. The best that can happen is that we undergo a collective transformation. I want to say that the uh, new beginner's course is opening up through Zoom and I'm still with 40% off on all my readings and courses, so if you need a reading, if you want to study with me privately or through a group, contact me. Thank you for spreading these videos and commenting on them. May we all be healthy, live long, and with great courage, live long and prosper.